There are eight worlds in our solar system, moons as big as worlds, and countless dwarf planets. Some like Io are full of marvels such as volcanoes as big as nations. And one rare blue world, Earth, may be unique in all the universe for its complex and intelligent life. And some, like Mars, are vast and beautiful deserts that have rich geological histories, may once have had water, and may even have contained life. The fifth planet, Jupiter, holds most of the mass of our star system, most of it by far. And there are other gas giants, as well as a colorful ice planet, a dual planet, Charon and Pluto at the edge of our solar system. But of all those varied and marvelous worlds, there can be only one Lord of the Rings. Saturn is the sixth planet from our star, and like three other worlds in our solar system, Saturn is also a gas giant. It is tilted 26.73 degrees, similar to Earth's 23 degrees of tilt, so like Earth, Saturn experiences seasons. And its north pole is decorated with a strange and beautiful hexagonal storm. A storm that has existed for at least four decades since its initial observation, and the origins of which scientists still are not quite certain. Saturn is also the second largest planet in our solar system, only Jupiter is larger. And like Jupiter, Saturn is not just a planet, it is a system. Saturn has some 83 known moons, and possibly as much as a hundred more small, irregular moons yet to be charted. Saturn's composition is mostly hydrogen and helium, and it is the least dense planet in our entire solar system. It is so light that, if one were possibly able to build a gigantic bathtub and drop Saturn into it, the planet would float on water. Now, Saturn is so big compared to Earth that if Saturn were a volleyball, Earth would just be a nickel beside it. But because of its extreme low density, Saturn has nearly the same gravity as Earth, just a little bit more at 1.065 g's. Like Jupiter, Saturn also has a very short day and night cycle. One day on Saturn lasts only 10 hours and 42 minutes. Because of this huge world's incredible spin or rotation rate, centrifugal force plays a significant role in the shaping of Saturn. Now, no rotating worlds are perfectly spherical. Even Earth is slightly larger at its equator than it is at its poles. But with Saturn, the difference is substantial. At its poles, the planet is 54,363 kilometers in diameter. But at its equator, it is 60,268 kilometers in diameter. That's a difference of almost 10%, and it means Saturn actually experiences greater gravity at its equator. Something I suspect may create a whole host of complications when navigating probes around the planet. But for all of Saturn's amazing characteristics, and even though it is host to two of the most interesting moons in our solar system, Enceladus and Titan, it is, beyond a shadow of a doubt, the rings for which Saturn is most noticed. The rings which make Saturn so gloriously beautiful. And in recent decades, we have learned that the rings are larger and far more interesting than was previously suspected. We can thank NASA's Cassini probe for that. NASA's Cassini probe orbited Saturn some 13 years. And in that time, Cassini taught us more about Saturn than all the previous centuries of observation put together. Here at the Enki Gap, we find the moon Pan. Pan is a shepherd moon, one of several moons in Saturn's rings that maintain gaps between the rings and exert a gravitational influence on the nearby rings, in a sense, keeping them in check, hence the moon's names, shepherd moons. Pan, like another shepherd moon, Atlas, has an unusual hamburger or flying saucer shape. This equatorial wedge is the result of ring material falling onto Pan as it clears the gap through which it orbits. The images provided above by NASA portray the actual shape of Pan. The Enki Gap is 325 kilometers across, and disturbances found along its edges led to the prediction in 1985 that there was a moon exerting tidal force in the area. And in 1990, that moon was discovered among 11 images taken by Voyager, and the moon was found to be within one degree of where its position was predicted. As the Shepherd Moon passes through the gap, it exerts a gravitational force upon the rings on either side, speeding up the particles closest to it and behind it, and slowing down particles in front of it. This creates wavelets in the nearby portions of the rings that were observed by Cassini. 
Japan is the innermost named moon of Saturn, and as such, has a faster orbit than most of the other moons. Here, you can see Pan racing through the Enki Gap, and several moons in the background falling behind. Unfortunately, apart from its shepherd role, little is known about this little moon. If you were to float in a stationary position just outside the rings, you would observe what would appear to be an endless cascade of detritus flying by, provided you could see it at all. Because at the innermost position, the rings of Saturn orbit at 23.2 kilometers per second. And even in the outer portion of the rings, where gravity plays somewhat less of an effect, the rings orbit at 16.4 kilometers per second. The rings are composed of matter in all different shapes and sizes, much of it water ice, but many other kinds of ice as well, including a smattering of heavier organic materials. While the vast majority of the rings are micrometer-sized dust, they are filled with even larger objects the size of pebbles, boulders, cobbles, and mountains. And despite that the rings are so vast that they wrap all the way around the enormous planet, the rings are as little as 10 meters thick, no more than a kilometer. One of the more amazing things about the rings is they actually have their own atmosphere. This atmosphere is created by ultraviolet radiation from the sun hitting the ice. The energetic ultraviolet radiation separates the molecules into their constituent oxygen and hydrogen, and this forms a ring atmosphere that orbits with the larger ring particles. However, this atmosphere is not very dense. If the entire thing were compressed back down onto the ice from which it originated, it would be barely an atom thick. The origin of Saturn's rings remains a debated and contested subject among astronomers. Some theories maintain that the rings began with the planets itself, originating some 4 billion years ago, while other theories postulate the rings are perhaps only 100 million years old, and that their mass is slowly being lost, consumed by Saturn itself. Data from the Cassini mission seems to favor the young ring hypothesis, and it places the formation of the rings somewhere between 10 million and 100 million years ago. The inner rings and the outer rings may have two different origins. It is believed the inner rings may have been formed from the initial nebular material from which Saturn is made, and if that is the case, the rings are very old. But a competing theory proposed by Eduard Roche in the 19th century suggests that the inner rings were created by an inner moon which broke up, perhaps due to the impact of a comet. Roche dubbed this moon Veritas, but in modern times it has been renamed Chrysalis. Chrysalis, a place of transformation, to me it seems more appropriate. And there are competing theories that also propose to explain the origin of Saturn's rings, but none are conclusive, and much more data is required. Saturn's moons have a much greater diameter than Saturn itself. This means the majority of the rings are always exposed to sunlight, and thus the night side of Saturn is lit with an afterglow of visible light. As illustrated in this image from Cassini, light bounces off the dark side of the planet, illuminating the night side of the world. Saturn is a remarkable world system, and yet another way that it is such is that it actually generates more light than it receives from the Sun. However, that light is not visible to the human eye, it is deep in the infrared. And, if an explorer from Earth were to approach the night side of the planet, as we are doing here, even despite the light reflecting off the rings, it would seem to that explorer as if he or she were approaching a world of darkness. But if we switch to the deep infrared as here, we suddenly discover a world illuminated like a star. This false color image was acquired by Cassini on February 24, 2007, and deep infrared light was translated into red, green, and blue. At this range of infrared, we can perceive clouds far into the atmosphere of Saturn, and the amazing deep blue of Saturn's rings portrays the abundance of water ice. If we were to look at Saturn from far overhead, say over its north pole, we would perceive a cascade of moons racing around a dense inner ring. But beyond that readily visible inner ring, there is a vast and diffuse outer ring. It stretches all the way from the moon Mimas to the great moon Titan. The E-ring originates with the moon Enceladus, a modestly large ice moon orbiting Saturn in such a position that it is tormented by tides of gravity. These tides create enormous friction within the moon, generating considerable heat and this leads to the existence of a warm ocean beneath Enceladus' surface. That ocean perpetually erupts in geysers that feed the E-ring. The E-ring is truly vast, but beyond it, there is the newly discovered Phoebe ring, which appropriately has also been called the Ghost Ring, as it is nearly invisible. It is so vast that it does not even begin till at least 4 million kilometers from Saturn, and perhaps not till as much as 10. To put that another way, if Saturn were the size of a globe, 
The Phoebe ring would not even begin until 66 meters away. That's two-thirds the length of a football field. The ring was originally discovered in 2009 by NASA's Spritzer Space Telescope, and it appears to originate with one of Saturn's battered outermost moons, Phoebe, and shares the same off-equator retrograde orbit as Phoebe. This incomprehensibly large structure proves yet once again that Saturn is the true Lord of the Rings. Thank you for venturing into the cosmos with me in this episode of Sky Story. Sky Story is part of the Understory Network, a collection of programs devoted to the study of the natural world. In MicroStory, we study the invisible world of the very small. In Understory, we examine natural history and issues of conservation. And in Sky Story, we look beyond Earth and explore the cosmos. There will be many more episodes, so to keep abreast, please take a moment to subscribe, and don't forget to hit that like button.